Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanted to talk to you all about astrophotography editing PCs. Because if you're anything like me, you hate sitting around and waiting for your frames to stack and stitching big mosaics and all of this kind of stuff. It takes a huge amount of time and investing a little bit into a PC dedicated for editing astronomy photos can save you a ton of time. And that's what I decided to do a couple of years ago in 2019. Fresh out of college with basically no money, I spent pretty much everything that I had at the time on a budget astrophotography editing PC so that I could start editing images from my QHY 600 camera. Now at the time, I had a 2015 MacBook Pro and it was definitely not up to the task of actually handling these files. So I came up with the cheapest possible PC build that could let me edit fast in PixInsight AstroPixel processor for doing image stacking and auto stacker PixInsight and doing mosaics and AstroPixel processor. This is the machine that I ended up coming up with. And I'm gonna tell you all about the parts, how much they cost, and show you the uh, PixInsight benchmark tests for this actual PC. But before I tell you all those parts, I'm just gonna tell you really quickly what's actually important when you're building an astrophotography editing PC. So the thing about astrophotography PCs is you care less about the graphics, the GPU, and you care more about the CPU and the storage methods you have along with the RAM. So my build emphasizes less on the GPU. The only time you'll ever really use a GPU for astrophotography editing is if you're using uh, an NVIDIA GPU for StarNet acceleration or Star Exterminator. So if you're looking to do AI-based processes, having a nice GPU makes it go faster, but those are small portions of your workflow anyways, so it's not 100% critical to spend a ton of money on a GPU because that's really not what you're going to be using your PC for most of the time. What does matter for an astrophotography editing PC is how much fast storage you have and how many cores and what your processing rate is on your processor and how much RAM you have. These are the most important things. The reason being is that PixInsight, when it's doing stacking or other processes, it does multi-threaded processes. So the more cores you have on your PC, the better parallelization that your computer can do to actually stack, register, integrate images faster than before. So you're gonna to want to buy a chip with as many cores and as fast as possible as you can for your CPU. And for me, that was the AMD Ryzen 3600X with the included Wraith Prism cooler. That was a really good budget option with I think eight threads or 16 threads, something like that. Eight core, 16 threads. Pretty good for doing any kind of stacking that I needed to do. The other thing that you really wanna focus on is having some kind of fast storage method. So think of an SSD, an NVMe SSD, and the reason you want these things in your astrophotography PC is because PixInsight loves to write files to perform the tasks that it has to do. So think about image calibration or registration. It's just writing files upon files upon files. And the faster you can write these files, the faster you can actually edit your images. So you should be looking for some kind of an SSD, an NVMe SSD to really speed up your ability to write and read files. That's really critical for a fast astrophotography PC. The last piece of the puzzle for most astrophotography PCs is how much RAM you have. And this is mostly for the mosaic side of things. If you're stitching mosaics together in a program like AstroPixel Processor, the more RAM you have, the larger mosaics you'll need, you'll you'll be able to do. Now, I know a lot of you aren't doing huge, massive mosaics, but if that's something you ever plan on doing, having more RAM helps you actually accomplish that. So it's something to think about. You need to be thinking about how many threads and cores you have on your CPU, the more the merrier. You need to be thinking about how much RAM you've got and how much fast storage you have for reading and writing your files. Now, this is the build that I actually came up with. And not factoring in any of the peripherals, you can see I have a mouse, keyboard, two monitors, and some external hard drives. This PC cost me less than $1,500 to actually build, which is pretty impressive, and it's just a testament to uh, how little money I had when I built the computer. But this is great because this PC has served me for the last two years in producing some of my best astrophotos, including the largest image of the Andromeda Galaxy ever taken, a whole host of massive mosaics, this cheap PC has been able to chew through all of it with a little bit of effort, but it has uh, shown through and done a great job for editing my huge mosaics. So without further ado, 
let's talk about the complete parts list for my budget astrophotography PC. So the first component I will start with is the actual case. The case for my computer is a Fractal Meshify C, and I went with this case because it's a, uh, I think it's a mid ATX size case. It had the space for the motherboard that I needed, and it had space for the hard drive trays that I was looking for, and it was a very cheap budget build. And I also really like having this, you can't see it, but it's a tempered glass side panel so you can see into the computer itself. I really wanted to be able to look at the thing that I had built. So the Fractal Meshify C was a great budget option for this build and it's been a great case overall. And it was only $117, so really cheap. The next part of the build, of course, is the brains and this is the CPU, which is the Ryzen 3600X CPU with the Wraith Prism Cooler included. So this saved me money on having to buy a, an aftermarket CPU cooler and it was also a great budget option with a lot of cores and threads and this was just the ideal option for me at the time to actually you know get the maximum performance with the minimum amount of cost so Ryzen 3600X you can get today for about $240 and it's just a great little CPU it does literally everything I need it to in PixInsight and APP. Now my GPU is a bit of an older one I've chosen a GTX 1660 Super and it is you know a bit of a smaller and less powerful gpu but again when we're thinking about optimizing our pc for astrophotos this part is less relevant yeah sure you can accelerate starnet or star exterminator or noise exterminator with a gpu but you really aren't going to be running those processes as much as you will be stacking so it's better to bias your pc towards doing the stacking and the other things but this GPU has been actually surprisingly fast for these tasks. I can handle my, uh, my images on the QHY600 in I think less than 30 seconds for a star removal. So that's perfectly good enough for me for speed. And that is the reason why I went with this one is it's a bit cheaper and it does the job. You can get one of these GPUs for $250 and yeah, it's, it's a pretty cheap budget option. One thing you should keep in mind is if you ever want to speed up Starnet or any other AI process with your GPU, you're going to need an NVIDIA GPU, so stay away from the AMD ones if you ever want to use it for astrophoto editing in your PC at all. Next for the motherboard, the motherboard for me was a bit more of an afterthought. I have an ASUS X570 motherboard and this is just the motherboard that fits my chip. So that's the one I went with. I basically went with the cheapest option and it has Wi-Fi built in. So, you know, that's pretty great. I can use the internet and whatnot. And it's just been, you know, a valid option for me. The nice thing about it is it has two NVMe SSD slots. I'm only using one NVMe SSD currently, but you know, it's a motherboard, it does the job. The motherboard I got will cost you $202 these days. So it's pretty cheap, it does the job. My thought more goes into the CPU and I just find the cheapest motherboard that matches it. All right, the next bit of kit is the RAM. And the RAM, I focus less on which brand it is. That's, I don't really know too much about RAM brands or RAM speeds. I'm just thinking about the raw total amount of RAM that I have. So I ended up going with four eight gigabyte ram slots so i have 32 gigabytes ram total in this computer and this has been sufficient so far i am kind of starting to run into my mosaic limitations with this amount of ram so the thing is in app if you're trying to do a big mosaic it all depends on how much ram you have to be able to determine how big you can go and for me i can really only do like 25 panels at full resolution with the qhy 600 and I've started to really hit that limit if I'm doing mosaics bigger than 25 panels. So if you plan on doing mosaics bigger than a, a gigabyte in size, then you should think about maybe stepping it up to 64 or 128 gigabytes of RAM. If your mosaic size is staying below a gigabyte, then 32 should be totally sufficient for anything you could actually produce. And this RAM cost me $150 total. So the next piece of equipment is the drive that I use to actually run Windows upon. And I use a Samsung Evo 870 one terabyte SSD. Now this isn't the fastest SSD you could get, but it's just the one that I actually happened to purchase for my computer. Originally, I had Windows installed on my circular disk hard drive, and then my computer started to malfunction because it was running on this drive. So I moved everything over to an SSD and that greatly sped up my computer in pretty much every dimension. So if you're doing astrophoto editing, definitely install Windows onto an SSD and not a circular disk drive because it's gonna be way, way, way faster for you. So 
The SSD is just a fast way to run Windows for me. I don't use it for any file storage. I do use it for program storage, and that's basically all it does. It's just a fast way to hold my programs and Windows. And you can get one of those for $108. The next piece of equipment I have is also an SSD. I have a Sabrient one terabyte NVMe SSD, and this hard drive is directly inside my motherboard's NVMe port, and this is what I actually use for my PixInsight swap files. Now, PixInsight swap files are those things I was talking about earlier where PixInsight loves to write and read tons of files at a time to do its processes. So you're going to want to configure PixInsight to actually put all of these files to your fastest NVMe drive, and that's gonna get you the best speeds possible. Now I'll go into a bit more depth about this soon, but this hard drive is very, very fast, faster than the 870 Evo, so this is what I use for just editing my images on and containing my swap files. It's gonna be the fastest method for you know doing these actual image editing tasks. You can get one of these new for only $80 or so, so it's a very cheap way to speed up your PixInsight processes. The next piece was a Seagate two terabyte drive. Now this hard drive is what I use to store all of my raw data files as I intake them from the observatories. So I'm shooting most of my astrophotography for deep sky remotely these days. So all of my data is synced via Dropbox onto this drive. And this drive will hold all of my raw files before processing and I will move them over onto my faster drive when I'm actually ready to start stacking them. So this is a two terabyte drive. I think it only costs like $50 or so, maybe even cheaper than that. And it, all it's there to do is hold my raw files as they come in from the observatories every single night. So I also have a Seasonic 750 watt power supply to run this whole computer. I determined that just from using PC parts picker and I just picked the best well-rated hard drive that fits these parts to power them sufficiently. So I settled upon that one. That piece of kit is less critical. Just get something that can power all of your stuff. That's the whole build in total. It cost me about $1,470, roughly speaking. There are some extras here that are unnecessary like these Corsair LL120 RGB fans, which you don't need to have. You can get cheaper fans that will do the job just fine for you and will save you a lot of money. So that's why I'm kind of listing this as a, about a $1,500 PC build. Of course, there are also the peripherals and stuff, but I'm not factoring those things in because they're not really relevant to you for astrophotography editing. You can just get whatever works for that. This is all about the PC itself. So that's the build. Uh, we're going to go into PixInsight now and I'm just going to demonstrate for you a quick benchmark and how I set up my swap files for the actual configuring of my NVMe SSD so we can get the best speeds possible out of this PC and I'll also show you what my PixInsight benchmarks are for it. Okay guys, here we are inside of PixInsight and I'm going to show you how you should set up your swap file storage to try and get the best performance and then I'm going to show you uh, the actual PixInsight benchmark process. So starting off with the actual configuring of our hard drive to get the best speeds, we go into edit and global preferences, and then we go into directories and network. And here we actually specify what we want for our swap storage directories or where PixInsight is gonna be writing these files to for doing the image editing. Now the thing about this is that you need to have a set of folders that PixInsight is going to use. And the reason is, is that PixInsight's speed will change depending on the number of folders that you have and what your setup is. So what you need to do is set up a number of folders first as a guess, and then you just keep running the benchmark with a different number of folders until you determine the proper amount. For me, PixInsight ran fastest when I had four swap storage directories but some people get better results at eight or 16 or 32. Uh, I think mostly people try and use base two numbers for this, but yeah, I found my best speeds to be at four. And these are actually set to my NVMe SSD, which lives on my D drive. So this is writing directly to the fastest possible speed my computer is able to produce. So once you have that configured, you can actually, you know, test what your speeds are. And you find that here in script and PixInsight benchmark. And here is where you will be able to test your, your computer's speed and see how it stacks up to uh, you know, other PCs out there. Some people post their reports to the forums just, just so you can kind of get an idea of the relative speeds you'd expect. 
but you just come in here and you hit run benchmark and it's gonna go through and run some processes on a photo. I don't remember what my result was. <laughs> it's been a while since I've ran this, but my PC did okay with the benchmark. Of course, I am also running OBS right now, so that's gonna be impacting my result a little bit. But remember, Pixinside doesn't use a ton of GPU, but I am using a little bit here. So this is gonna impact my result slightly, but this is just to give you an idea of what happens. So my total score ended up being 15440 with 15215 for CPU and 16523 for swap. So this swap just corresponds to how fast you're writing your swap directory folders, which is what we set up earlier. And having a fast SSD is what's going to boost those numbers up. And having a faster CPU with more cores and more threads is what's going to increase this number here. So those are the two key metrics for PixInsight, and those are the ones you want to worry about the most when you're you know, picking a PC. So if you want to contribute something to PixInsight, you can run this a bunch of times, you know, and then submit it to the server. But that's just how you run the benchmark and that's how you set up your files for the maximum possible speed. All right, so that was my budget astrophotography editing PC. In total, the actual rig itself cost me about $1,500 and it's just been an absolute awesome PC for editing my photos. I've been doing astrophotography professionally and I haven't yet had to actually upgrade my cheap PC because it's been very well optimized for astrophotography. So I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions about Astro PCs, go ahead and drop those in the comments. I'm always around to offer some advice. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.